Hello, hello, beautiful, blessed people. How are you today? Hope all is well. If not, sending so much love your way. Happy Tuesday, the day of me recording this. Happy Mars Day. Um, happy full moon in Capricorn coming up. How is your heart today? How is your heart today? Just take a second. <sighs> Breathe and tune into your heart. How is it doing today? Really tap in. Why do I ask? Because we are dealing with some heavy emotions, some big emotions. We are in a full moon week. The full moon is tomorrow. The full moon in Capricorn is tomorrow. When there's a full moon, ask anybody <laughs> that works in the emergency room, ask teachers, um, ask parents, <laughs> ask pet moms, um, some big emotions tend to come up around the full moon. And not only is it a full moon week, but the full moon and Mercury and Pluto, which are all kind of like mental, um, mental things that can trigger our mental is um, kind of being triggered right now. So um, I thought it was the perfect time to pop in and to share a little bit about what's going on in the sky, give you some astro weather for the day, and to talk about the full moon that's illuminating um, in Capricorn, as well as um, to share and leave you with some oracle and some self-care messages to care, take care of your soul and yourself. Grab a sip of water. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So this week, like I said, a lot is being stirred up mentally and emotionally for us. You know, the moon is connected to our emotions. So once it's full and once it's bright, we have some full and some big bright emotions popping up. And um, like I said, Mercury is um, kind of involved, especially today, Mercury is squaring off with Chiron, which is another reason why I chose to show up today, um, because we have two um, strong aspecty aspects going on today, which is Mercury square Chiron and Venus trine Saturn. And I'll get to those in a moment. But this week and the beginning of the week is really asking us to kind of um, listen to ourselves, tune in to ourselves our mission and mark into our intuition and tune into ourselves there is a lot of mental chatter a lot of emotions that are going to want to um penetrate your space at this time penetrate your mind activate your mind your mind is already going through so much i'm sure already um there might be some wounds that are being reactivated right now some triggers um so really tuning into yourself and figuring out what that means for you and kind of noticing that. We talked a little bit about that on the tea and tarot, um, how mindfulness can be such a helpful grounding practice to kind of recenter yourself and recalibrate um, because we know where the mind flows, energy goes, right? So really focusing your mind on places you want it to flow can really be helpful during this time. So, and also with Mercury in the sign of Cancer, it's all about listening, how listening can be a superpower. Um, you know, I'm Mercury, I could talk all day. I'm Mercury ruled, double, triple Mercury ruled, Gemini, Sun, Virgo, Moon, and Rising, and um, mental chatter. Um, I, I, I like to talk, right? Um, but listening is also a superpower. So um, knowing that as well, um, and not necessarily reacting so fast to what you're hearing and what you're um, kind of being aware of, but letting the, and what you're reading and what you're mentally processing, but letting like taking a pause, grounding yourself in the moment, asking how that message resonates and how that message feels. If you hear something I say, take it with a dash of salt, right? Take what resonates and leave behind what doesn't. Really tap in after you listen and say, hmm, how did that sit with me? Oh, what she said there really didn't resonate with me, so I'm going to leave that there. But mm, that kind of triggered me. Let me sit with that for a moment and come back to it. 
permission to do that. We are invited to do that this week, right? And in all times, but especially this week, because like I said, a lot is being brought up um, for us mentally, right? And when I talk about the eight dimensions of wellness, um, emotional wellness is really kind of like, um, and mental wellness is kind of like the focus of this week. Um, what else? Um, and also check to see where cancer falls in your chart, in your natal chart, because that's a lot of the energies that are kind of going to be brought up for this week. Also, I would say Venus. Venus is doing some interesting stuff this week. I will um, kind of do a deep dive into my Venus placements and hopefully share that with you all this week or in the upcoming weeks um, to see really diving deep and to see where, what planets Venus is act, um aspecting and really diving deep into Venus because Venus um, is the only planet that is in my 11th house, which is ruled by Cancer. So um, whenever I'm in a zodiac season, I kind of like to look at the plants, the plants. I love plants. I always like to look at plants, but the planets <laughs> in that particular um, zodiac sign as we're in that particular zodiac season to really dive deep into see what kind of those messages the planets are trying to communicate with me now. And that's kind of perfect because Mercury is in Cancer, right, as well. So um, for me, Venus uh, falls in my 11th house, which is cancer ruled. So connecting with the community, connecting with the collective, um, nurturing the collective is really like showing love and beauty and aesthetics to the collective is all kind of the vibes that I'm getting from my Venus in the 11th house ruled by cancer right so um invitation to dive deep into your chart if you need some help and assistance you can always um schedule a discovery call with me on my website zenwellnessspace.com or book me for a reading or um i also do um some natal charts as well so if you're interested in that feel free to send me a dm or um head to my website under the soul love offerings tab and um check out what i have for you there so let's talk about the transits for today mercury square chiron so let's break down each one. So Mercury, the planet of communication, messages, information, um, is squaring off. So squaring off, right? The two planets are kind of like squaring off, like talking to each other, challenging each other to bring out the best from each other, right? And Chiron, Chiron is the wounded healer. I also heard a beautiful reflame of Chiron being the golden healer, right? So from our wounding we can kind of create gold and um from that gold it's able to kind of like um nourish us in a like a luxurious way um i'm probably not explaining that correctly but i thought that was a beautiful reframe that the way that they broke it down the golden healer the the wounded healer from our wounds um in processing what came up in our wounds we're able to help heal ourselves so when these two planets are meeting, it can trigger anxiety, right? Because again, Mercury, our mind. Speaking of anxiety, grab your little, your 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 animals. They can help relieve some anxiety, right? Yeah, yeah. Always knows when to pop up at the right time. So Mercury squaring Chiron. Grab those plants. Grab those animals. Um, because it does bring up some anxiety um, in us, um, as well as interpersonal conflicts. So um, Mercury is kind of like those interpersonal relationships. So your cousins, your friends, your family, um, your coworkers, um, those interpersonal relationships. So some heavy or triggering dynamics, anxiety provoking dynamics might be brought up within your interpersonal relationships. So really again tapping in and tuning in to realizing that these are going on right now right we need to or i need to kind of be aware of that and maybe not take it so personally because i know we're in a full moon week and i know mercury is squaring off with chiron so some people are being triggered some anxieties are being provoked so just being aware of that as you're dealing with people as you're interacting um with some people because um some of our nerves are being activated and touched somebody might get on your nerves you might get on somebody's nerves so just being aware of that um um currently right now in the season and the other um 
thing that's going on today, um, July 12th, the day of me recording this, is Venus is trining Saturn. And, um, you know, when these, this is the exact date that it's happening, but I find that these activations or these aspects tend to last a, a range of three days or six days, like three days prior, three days after. You might feel these energies, but you'll feel it heavily today. So Venus tr um, trining with Saturn, this is a beautiful, beautiful transit to help us out with kind of deal with some of the um, aspects that are going on today and this week. Venus, the planet of beauty, of um, love, of aesthetics, of art, of pleasure, of resources, is squaring off, or not squaring, excuse me, is trining with Saturn. And in a trine, it means that they're coming together to create something beautiful, um, to create something um, that can help us. We think of three, right? The mother, father, child, the, um, the, the, the trinity, right? The feminine, masculine, to create, to birth something new. So Venus um, in a trine with Saturn, which is all about structures, um, resources, kind of like stability, um, structures, is really helping us to feel safe at this time to feel safe with the things that we have around us right with the relationships we have around us using the material world to support our mental evolution so using some of the tools that we have as i know for me i use <laughs> big time um my one of my favorite tools is tarot so using tarot using the resources that i've gained to find more tarot decks to help me um, kind of with the mental chatter right i know that this is not my only resources and, and i can't rely on, on only this i can't rely on shopping to <laughs> to kind of make me feel better but in this moment if that kind of makes you feel better go out and shop a little bit right all within the constraints of yourself right um, using the material world to support your mental evolution. Um, and it reminds us that we have options, right? That we have options. We have options to tap into tarot. We have options to tap into grounding. We have to options to tap into the resources that we have around us to help support us in our mental emotions during this time. So now briefly, 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 let's talk about the full moon, the full moon in Capricorn. So then it's an invitation to look back on January 2nd because Jen and I have my Capricorn candle burning here at my little, um, my, my goddess altar. My inventory was changed to look back on, um, January 2nd. January 2nd, we had the new moon in Capricorn, so we are in the full illumination to some of those um, new moon intentions that you set on January 2nd. So, invitation to look back in your journals, on your camera gallery, in your IG post to see really what was coming up um, during the during January 2nd, during the new moon in Capricorn. And for me, um, I'll just read a little bit about what's going on for me, and I'm so happy that I use um, the Zen Wellness Space IG page um, and YouTube, Instagram, blogs, newsletter, all as my personal journal so that I'm able to go back and to reflect on and to see exactly what was going on in the Zen Wellness Space at this time. So um, the new moon in Capricorn intention that I set for myself is I focus on building a life that is centered on pleasure. And during this time, I um, created my new logo that you kind of see here. Um, I created my new logo with lots and lots and lots of intention embedded in magic, embedded in my new logo. Um, again, creating, um, I, focus, I was focusing on building a structure, building my empire, building um, my Zen wellness space centered in pleasure as you see i'm kind of like in a bubble here um on my logo and there's a huge smile on my face of pleasure really centering that pleasure right um so i also worked on a happy list i wrote down all of the things that made me happy and i actually um have that in a bowl 
on my altar here so at any time I can pull out something that makes me happy and so I did that as an altar practice for myself um, because I was bringing in the happiness why because um, Capricorn rules my fifth house so anything that falls in my fifth house is all about joy pleasure children erotic um, passion kind of like that so just centering joy right it was really the focus with the new moon in Capricorn so creating those happy lists like what am I tolerating right now that is not keeping me happy I wrote that out um, I was in mystery school. I did um, some of my um, first offerings. I partnered with people. And some of the archetypes that I was embodying at that time was the adventurous mama that sparks joy. Just I was thinking about wild thornberries, like that mama from wild thornberries that always took her family on an adventure and, you know, sparked joy different places here and there. Again, why fifth house? Um, I was also the Haitian girl magic that Haitian girl magic because I was really tuning into um, Haitian teachings like really embodying the high priestess I was in mystery school and priestess school so like really embodying what it means to be magical what it means to be a priestess what it means to have that Haitian girl magic really exploring that as well as I was a bright-eyed CEO so I mean if you think of bright-eyed and bushy tailed. I was like so new to this. Okay, now that I'm actually bringing in revenue, now that I'm actually the CEO of my empire, like, what do I need to do? What do I need to create? I'm just so bright eyed and bushy tailed. Now, with those intentions, as I look back, I am in full illumination of that. The um, current archetypes that I'm working with right now, I thought that I had them written out right here. Yes, I do have them written out right here is the empowered emperor so i went from the bright-eyed bushy tail um the bright-eyed bushy tail ceo to the empowered emperor the empowered emperor knows what they need to do to create the structures to build the empire they are empowered okay um as part of um rebecca um one of my numerology mentors like love 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 her work um part of the summer solstice offering she sent tarot cards from the movie tarot deck and guess what card i got i got the emperor so i have been working with the emperor this whole season this whole summer i probably will be working with the emperor and i've pulled out all the emperor in all of my decks and they're on my altar like working with each one of them and what does it mean what does it mean to be the emperor can i reframe that for myself in this card and i cracked up laughing when i saw this because this is scarface right from the movie right and he's the emperor depicted here he's got the gun in his hand he's got this for protection i feel like he's got the um the spirit in his other hand of receiving the gun in his in his in his masculine hand of acting right there's some libations on the table there's a cigar and this is like me y'all like funny story is I, when I was growing up, I, I grew up Brooklyn girl. I loved, 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 loved mafia movies. I was obsessed with mafia movies. Bronx Tale, Goodfellas, you name it. Obsessed, right? Like Italian men. Huh? Obsessed. <laughs> R.I.P. Ray. One of my favorite movies was Goodfellas. And... I wanted to be, like, my aspiration in life was to be a mafia wife. <laughs> I wanted to be the mafia wife, the one that would throw the drugs um, down the toilet, invite the cops in for coffee, like, did what I needed to do to make sure my husband's empire was taken care of, right? Now, I'm stepping up as that emperor. I'm doing what I need to do to create the structure and the space that I need to create for myself. And so, isn't that beautiful? The intention that I set out um, with the new moon of being that bright eyed, bushy tail to focus on building a life that is centered on pleasure. I'm doing that right now, baby. I'm doing that right now. I'm being the emperor. I'm stepping up as that right now. No more. Um, and, you know, I think of the empress. The empress is kind of like that wife, you know, that mafia wife. And that's very important, too. Like, I really think of the emperor. Think of the two cards that's surrounding the emperor. Is that 
divine, powerful, um, feminine energy. You've got the You've got the Empress, right, on one side, and you've got the Hierophant on the other side. And the Hierophant, you can think of feminine, masculine. In my mind, um, it's, it's not, um, I don't know, in my mind, it's a she, right? So I'm just going to use that. <laughs> so the Hierophant, um, so the Empress is all about receiving, like she is that wife, she is that, um, she is that, um, that person that takes care of everything and kind of just like receives just like come on in cups like what do you need i got you like a husband you got you did that oh let me wash your clothes let me wash your i know this is a really bad analogy but this is kind of like what i'm thinking so bear with me um so that the emperor can do their thing take care of business bring all the money in so she can buy her beautiful furs and relax in her luxurious um you know couch and birth all the babies right <laughs> the emperor has to um do the work right do the work and the hierophant is kind of like that godfather i think right that godfather is like hmm, what you need what you need from me what you need let me teach you let me show you how to do the things i have the keys to kind of unlock that knowledge to empower you to show you that you're the boss right i'm the godfather it's time you know i'm the godfather i'm just here for advice okay i'm just here for advice <laughs> y'all i'm cracking myself up um but that's kind of like how I see it in my head, like the mixing of all of those together. And that's currently kind of like the mixing that I'm in during this season. I love to work with Trinities. I love to work with three. So the Empress, Emperor, the Hierophant, really me being the Emperor right now, but still getting some of those energies of the Empress and the Hierophant. And um, the intention that I have for myself right now in this season that I'm setting for the new, the full moon in Capricorn is by sharing my applied knowledge, I step up as the emperor, here to nourish my community and strengthen my ancestral roots. I do so with joy in my heart and with a sense of safety and confidence. So that is my intention for the full moon in Capricorn. So let me go back to my notes just to give you just an idea of how I use what I learned um, in the new moon and how I'm currently activating it in the full moon as we are illuminating at this time. Just pull my notes here. So what else is going on with this new moon? So this new moon is bringing a lot up right a lot up um a lot up sorry i have like notes all over the place so i'm just let me just recenter um yeah the, the moon in capricorn is not as um resourced i'll say as it is in, in some of the other signs it's kind of like the least resource in the other sign because you think cancer right is it's it's like the most resourced in cancer the moon loves cancer the moon in Capricorn is like, mm, why? Because it's opposed Cancer, right? Capricorn is opposing Cancer. So the moon is in the opposing sign of its home. So it's not as well resourced here. So just keeping that in mind. The moon is also opposing Pluto. And with Pluto, Pluto is all about, and here comes my cat again, because he knows we're talking about Pluto. Pluto is, is, is some transformational energy. It's some sticky waters. It's some, like, like, ugh, like, <laughs> it's, it's, I like Pluto because it's transformation. And I do like a transformational moment. Pluto is transformation. So emotions around um, shame and guilt, because Pluto is also associated with shame and guilt and being triggered. So when the moon is opposing Pluto, like it's kind of like opposing. So it's um, like on opposite sides. They're looking at each other, like across the, across the zodiac wheel and like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> kind of, kind of thing. So this can also bring in Pluto is um, a social planet, right? So this can, so we think about how that could be brought up socially. So um, systematic violence in our country, Pluto return of the U.S. So being um, aware and mindful of that. 
Saturn is also squaring off with Uranus. So Saturn's structure, Uranus kind of like that revolutionary, um, innovative, like, ways of doing things so infrastructures are crumbling and needing radical change in evolution and revolution right so because our systems are crumbling we again social um uranus planet we might see that around us social infrastructures saturn is crumbling squaring off they're squaring off they're looking at they're looking at each other and like what do you want what do you want but they're crumbling in order for us and building up this tension in order for us to do something about it they're bringing things this up for us to do something about it right these big 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 emotions are coming up for us to do something about it right so with that being said what structures and what radical change do we need to activate to create new structures right and um this yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Venus squaring off with Neptune. Venus squaring off with Neptune um, can bring up things around body and image because, you know, beauty, aesthetics um, as well. So we might feel needy at this time. Neptune is kind of like that, like deep, 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 deep emotions. Um, we're unsure of where we stand with others. So just being aware of that. And Mercury sextiling Uranus is a beautiful transit that's here to kind of help us out and can give us clues and innovations to how to get out of our own way mentally um, and to see things different again uranus is kind of like that innovator like so how can we see different see things differently because like our mind is being activated so we might get a clue on how to activate with all of these um triggering feelings that are happening right now um with us and again mercury squaring chiron and venus squaring trining saturn is still some of the energy that's around this full moon so just keeping that in mind um, the, over the weekend, so you we're going to feel this heavy throughout the week, right? So if you're at work, if you're with your children, if you're with your animals, if you're with your projects, like really keep this in mind, um, during the week. And, um, by the weekend, we're going to get into some beautiful energy. So as Friday rolls around Venus day, it's time to recalibrate. We're going to be in Aquarius moon. So really calibrating, maybe sharing on social media, some of the things that came up for you, um, maybe connecting with friends, um, or, um, technology, um, on WhatsApp or something, um, just really recalibrating and tuning in and talking about, you know, air, the element of air, what came up for you, um, the water bearer, right? So like what came up with you emotionally, like really chatting that with other people and recalibrating because, um, during the weekend we have, um, a Mercury Kazemi, so Mercury will be in the heart of the sun, Mercury conjoining the sun. So this is a great time to put yourself out there, get a message out there um, to your collective, to all of my entrepreneurs. The veil is very, very thin as well with the sun trining um, Neptune and Mercury trining um, Neptune as well and um, Venus entering into the sign of Cancer. So it's a very, um, the veil is very thin this day and like it's a beautiful day in the sky. So it's a great day for spiritual work. So for ritual work. So if you want to do something based on what came up, um, during the, um, full moon, it's a beautiful day over the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday to really, um, tune into that and do that. And we have Pisces moon days, which is a great time spiritually to, um, do some of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So let's pull some cards here. And I wanted to, I, I did pull some cards and then, um, the, the, I wanted to leave you all with some divine beloved oracle messages, some messages and some prayers um, from my deck. And the first card that popped out 
sorry, I have a hair all over me, is true nature. I know the eternal. Change me, divine beloved, into one who knows the true nature of our soul and awaken me to the knowledge of the eternal. Let me know my true self as consciousness. So again, in the beginning of the week, I talked about really tuning into yourself, tuning in to what you need at this time, tuning into your intuition, really sitting and contemplating what coming up for you right so tuning into your true nature not that outside noise not that outside clutter but your true nature what does that mean really stepping outside of yourself okay i'm here in the present in the world but let me tap in what does this truly mean for my heart in my heart i'm checking in with my heart how does my heart feel about that? So really tuning in and checking in and accepting that. Again, we see acceptance. Sorry, I got hair all over. <laughs> really accepting that. Accepting myself. Let me love and accept myself as you love me. May I find you shining brightly within my own being. May I finally find you shining brightly within my own being so really tuning in really accepting yourself and accepting the emotions that are coming up because we know some triggering some healing some structures some um wounding we know all of this is being brought up right now right so really tuning in and accepting ourselves as we are listening to seeing how we act or how we can react and I'll just ask spirit please spirit to leave us with some self-care messages thank you spirit that we can tune into at this time mm. okay so a lot popped out here so intuition surprise surprise again tapping into our heart center really figuring out what that means for us really tapping into our intu intuition and based on what comes out comes up within our heart I'm acting out based on our intuition. Really tuning into our hearts. Because they've got a message. They've got something to say. I'm seeing here. There's something that needs to be brought out in your heart. So really tapping in and tuning into your intuition at this time. Surrounding. Surrounding. Sorry, my cat. Yep. <laughs> Scratching. So um surrounding yourself with positive affirmations like i created affirmations for myself all over um on, posted on a wall write it on yourself if you feel called that could be a cool practice painting yourself with affirmations all over your body and then taking a shower and just really absorbing those words into your skin and really draining out some of the words that don't serve you at this time so that's a cool practice to do at this time so really surrounding yourself with positive information. I know an um, affirmation that I have for myself is to bring abundance into my life that will take my power. Wait, let me try again. Bring abundance to my life. I will take the power and intention to create structures needed to maintain and empower. To bring abundance into my life, I will take power and intention to create the structures needed to maintain and empower. And I have that because um, this is a message directly from my angels that they told me this week. It's all about power and intention. So really being the power and intention, really emperor vibes here. So really surrounding yourself with those words, with those divine loves and what you're meant to do create archetypes for yourself what would the archetype say really reminding and repeating those as mantras for yourself sorry y'all when i channel my nose gets super itchy so i apologies um sinking with the moon sinking with the moon again just like really being in tune and being aware of what's going on with you in the astro realms full moon so really sinking with that and sinking in what comes up and keeping pleasured, centered in all of it. Because don't forget pleasure. And again, I'm, this is what I'm really getting. Because a lot is being brought up. We will, might forget pleasure and might forget to give ourselves pleasure at this time. So really give yourself some pleasure at this time. 
and bottom of the deck to be still to be still so that's all that i have for you all today i hope that this was helpful and nourishing to you all i'm sure this was long i'll go back and check but sending you all so much so much love in this time and remember to tune in you are the powerhouse. You are the emperor. You are the boss, okay? You are the godfather, the godmama telling you, you are the boss, my friend, okay? And, um, yeah, take care. Take good care. Tune into your heart. Sending so much love.